This is a perfect use case for Async Rust. And there is a huge difference in cost between these models and providers. For my use case, it was the best intersection of accuracy, performance, and cost effectiveness. By the way, this is not sponsored. I just really have enjoyed using Hugging Face inference providers. I have a new favorite approach for integrating large language models into my Rust projects. And this is not specific to Rust necessarily, but I'm gonna show you from the Rust perspective. I built a simple command line chatbot using the approach that I'm gonna talk about. I'm not gonna to go too deep into the code, but I do first wanna talk about the decision between self-hosting a language model and using an inference provider. By self-hosting, I mean the language model is loaded into memory on the same instance or VPS that your Rust code is running on. And this can be challenging for a number of reasons. First, GPU memory in something like EC2 is very costly. You might be paying something like $30 or $40 an hour for an EC2 instance that can only run medium-sized language models. And so if you're not fully saturating that instance with work the entire time, it's probably not going to be cost-effective. The other approach is using inference providers. And OpenAI was kind of the first inference provider, right? You send them some words to do language model inference on, and they send you a response back. Everyone that came after them, all the inference providers that came after them, kind of had to copy their API. If they wanted to be competitive, it, they had to be easy for developers to integrate with, and consequently, they had to conform to the OpenAI API. The benefit to us as developers is that if a crate or a library is intended to integrate with the OpenAI API, it's probably going to work with other inference providers as well. Now, in almost all cases, inference providers charge by the token, and you can kind of think of a token as roughly one-to-one -one with words. Sometimes a word might be two or three tokens, but you can think of it like words. Inference providers will typically charge a specific amount of money per million tokens for a given language model. And the price for input tokens and output tokens is usually different. I put together a spreadsheet here for some inference providers and some language models that they vend. So you can kind of get a feel of the, the price differences. And there is a huge difference in cost between these models and providers. For example, GPT-5 output tokens are 285 times as expensive as Amazon Nova micro output tokens. That's a huge difference. The other big thing about inference providers that I think a lot of people don't realize is that there is a huge difference in performance across inference providers for the same model. Inference providers actually often build their own hardware to serve these models. Two shiny examples of that are Grok and Cerebrus. Grok and Cerebrus use custom hardware that is not available to my knowledge outside of those companies. If you're running these models on something like an NVIDIA GPU, the performance is just not even going to be competitive as compared to something like Cerebrus. Cerebrus runs, for example, runs Quen3 235B Instruct at 1400 tokens per second. That difference in performance can make or break a particular use case. So Performance is another thing to consider when deciding on an inference provider. This is another reason why self-hosting language models might not make a ton of sense right now, because even if you were to provision a huge GPU instance on AWS or Google Cloud, you're probably not gonna get anywhere near the performance numbers that you would get with something like Cerebras or Grok. So that's worth considering, especially if you have to service a lot of sporadic traffic or a lot of bursty traffic where you have to do a lot of inference in parallel. So which inference providers did I ultimately go with? Well, I didn't go with just one. I went with what I would consider an inference provider broker. And in my case, that was Hugging Face Inference Providers. Now, Hugging Face Inference Providers is a relatively new product. Hugging Face has been around for a long time. They're the go-to repository of open weight language models. If you're going to do any investigation into open weight language models, you're probably gonna start at the Hugging Face website. And the nice thing about that is you can go to the Hugging Face website, browse through the models, and you can download the actual open weights and run these models locally if you want to. So I could go to files and versions and literally download it and run it locally, or I can go to deploy inference providers. And it's gonna show me a list of all the inference providers that provide GPT OSS 120B, which there's quite a few. So I can integrate with Hugging Face inference providers and. Just by changing this request parameter right here, I can change the inference provider that's going to service that request behind the scenes. So if I want Cerebrus specifically to service this request, I would just do GPT OSS 120B colon Cerebrus, right? By the way, this is not sponsored. I just really have enjoyed using Hugging Face inference providers. They don't even know I'm making this video. Just wanna make that clear. <laughs> so that's what you do if you know what model you wanna use and you wanna see what inference providers have that model on the back end. 
What if you know which inference provider you want to use and you want to choose a model based on what they have available? So say you need really fast inference. And at the time I'm making this video, Cerebras is by far the fastest inference provider. Say you know you want Cerebras, you want to select from any of the models that they offer. The way to do that is you'd go into settings, inference providers, and it gives you a list of all the inference providers supported by Hugging Face inference providers. Say I want Cerebras, I would click on this ellipses and do list supported models. And it's going to give me a list of all the models supported by Cerebras on Hugging Face inference providers. They have all the standards. They have GPT OSS, Quen3, Llama4. There's probably something for every use case here. They're not the biggest selection. Other providers have bigger selections but Cerebras is currently the gold standard for speed by a large margin. Quick overview of the code. This, this is just a, again, a command line chatbot. So I'm just gonna do cargo run and it's just like ChatGPT. What is one plus one? It's gonna answer, I can ask it follow-up questions. What about three? It's kind of ambiguous. One plus one plus one equals three. Anyway, so yeah, it's just a straight up chatbot. And by the way, the crate I'm using to actually integrate with Hugging Face inference providers is OpenAI API RS which as you can tell by the name is intended to integrate with the OpenAI API. But again, inference providers these days kind of have to copy paste the OpenAI API to make it easier for developers to integrate with them. So you can use this with any inference provider really, including Hugging Face inference providers. And this is super simple. You just set up the OpenAI client with the endpoint and the API key, figure out what model you wanna use. Again, the format for this is model colon inference provider. I don't have to specify the inference provider. I can do something like this and it's gonna auto route to whatever inference provider it deems fit. I personally don't do this because there is some variance in the behavior of the different inference providers, even with the same model. So I like to pick a specific provider and if you need to, you can have like a secondary or a tertiary. I personally don't like to auto route, but there are some use cases where that's going to be sufficient. Some, some variance between requests is going to be acceptable. Most of mine are not like that, but yeah, there are some that may be perfectly fine with that approach. So I'm going to explicitly specify the provider. And then we're just gonna maintain a list of chat messages. For every message the user types, we're gonna push a chat completion message onto the messages vector. When we get a response back, we're gonna push a, another message onto the messages vector with the assistant role instead of the user role. This is a perfect use case for async Rust. If you're familiar with async Rust at all, language model inference is an amazing use case for it because you can fire off like 20 inference requests to a provider and concurrently wait for the responses from all of them. That pattern came in handy a lot in the project I was just working on. There's a lot of cases where the user saves a new piece of data and we'll need to kick off many inference requests based on that new data and wait for them all concurrently. Async Rust was a very good fit for that. I also wanted to go over how I decided on the model because choosing the model was very difficult. One of the issues I found with the smaller models is that one out of five times, they wouldn't do what I needed them to do. And that's where the bigger models really distinguish themselves because they'll do what I need five out of five times. And to test this out, I actually wrote a benchmarking tool, a proprietary benchmarking tool in Rust that runs through test cases that are very relevant to my application. I'm not gonna go into what those, what those consist of, but each test has a model and a provider and a set of criteria for whether the, the test passed or not. This spreadsheet mainly consists of the larger models. You can see they mostly pass the test cases. There's one smaller model in this spreadsheet. GPT OSS 20B. That's a good example of a model that a small model that seems like it's going to work. Anecdotal tests look really good, but when you run the same test five, 10 times, it's going to not do what you need it to do some of those times. And for my use case, that's un unacceptable. I wound up choosing Quen3 235B A22B hosted by Cerebras because for me, it, for my use case, it was the best intersection of accuracy, performance, and cost effectiveness definitely not the cheapest model by any means. It's nowhere near as expensive as GPT-5 or something like Anthropic Claude, but its accuracy is sufficient for my use case. It's very fast because it's a mixture of experts model. 235B is the number of total parameters, and then it has 22 billion active parameters, which means it, this is hand wavy and oversimplified, but it should be roughly as fast as a 20 billion parameter model. So it should be roughly as fast as GPT OSS 20B. Of course, your mileage may vary. Use cases differ. Maybe for yours, you can get it with Llama 318B. For my use case, that model did not work well. I hope this gives a little bit of insight into 
some problems you might run into when integrating language models into your application, some gotchas that you may not have considered, and maybe give Hugging Face inference providers a look. Again, this is not sponsored or anything. I also want people to know about Cerebras and Grok because I feel like most people don't know about them. And they actually, the speed that Cerebras and Grok offer may actually be the difference between an application being feasible to implement and not being feasible. Like if you didn't have that speed, the application wouldn't be possible. The project I just worked on is not one of those, but I can imagine some projects where that speed is absolutely critical to the use case. The code for the simple chatbot is uh, in a link in the description. Check that out if you're interested. Drop me some comments if you have any questions. Other than that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.